All right, can everybody hear me? I'll wait for a little confirmation here. I'm turning up the volume. I'm kind of a quiet talker. I'm a quiet guy. All right, perfect. I'm, I'm happy to see a lot of my uh, downline on here today to support me. Um, this is my uh, third time now of talking on this call, and you know, it's the first time I haven't been really nervous about it. <laughs> my beast mode voice. I'll try. We're, we're working on that at our fit club on uh, getting a little bit louder because we're, we're, we're pretty quiet. But, um, you know, I appreciate Lindsay as my coach. And that, that's the first thing I'll share a little bit about. Um, what I feel your sponsor coach, um, is, is their job is for you uh, to help you on your journey. And the, the main thing I, I can see a coach what they can do to help you is show you that it's possible and inspire you, you know, to grow and be a better person than, than you thought that you could be. Uh, you know, Beachbody has all of the tools that we need with the Coach Training Academy, the Coach Breaking News that's always on the right, right hand side of the call. And I, I told you guys I was going to get a little emotional. I'm going to talk a little bit about my story today because a lot of you don't know um, what my life's like besides seeing me post about P90X and P90X2 all the time. But Lindsay has been an amazing coach to me. Um, and like she says, I, I don't ask many questions. And I feel part of my success was the fact that, you know, seeing her succeed, she offered me to be a coach seven months. I believe it was seven months before I actually became a coach. And so I got to watch her uh, grow in her business and see her start to succeed. And, and I thought to myself that, you know, why can't I, why can't I do that? You know, she's a mother of, you know, she has her daughter. She had some P90X results and she wanted something and she went and got it. So, you know, that's, that's the biggest thing that I can thank Lindsay for is, you know, showing me that it is possible that, you know, there are, success stories out there and it's just a normal person like like her and like like myself and and other top coaches like Wayne Wyatt and she you know she is a great leader because she understands you know she tries to to understand what drives you to succeed and she's found out that I'm a competitive person so you know she always can get my drive going with a little competition when I see her success club points I say I can do that to myself or I, I try to beat her which hasn't happened yet but I'm sure it will and uh, the other thing is she understands um, my personality you know we can tell that she's read personality plus uh, another big tip to being a successful coach is your personal development and she understands that I am a person <laughs> she understands that I'm a person um, that likes to be complimented you know I read a book with my wife uh, called the five love languages which I think goes well with this business as well so that you can understand um, you know people how to have a relationship with with people and what what makes them you know happy and for example my wife hers is quality time and for example mine is I uh, can't remember the word right now but it's uh, words of affirmation was the word uh, was the one that wine was so I like to be told that I'm doing good I like to be complimented, complimented, and she is an excellent coach at doing that. Uh, as you can see, uh, how she does with these calls, um, complimenting those that worked hard, and that's that's what I really love about this job. I I've worked at my current job for five years, and it drives me in this business because I work. I feel I work three times harder than anybody else at my job but I don't get complimented for it. I don't get a raise. I don't get anything from it. But in a business like this, you work hard and you don't even need to get a compliment. You get to see the results yourself. And yes, I highly recommend the five love languages. If you're married, read it with your spouse. It will help build your relationship. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about personal development here in a minute, but I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about my story. I've kind of been rambling to and fro, uh, but I'm going to grab a drink really quick and leave you hanging. 
you know, Lindy says I've uh, been a coach for 10 months, which is true. My official coach birth date was April 11th, uh, 2011. You know, that's a day that I'm never going to forget, a day, a day that changed my family and my kids' life. Um, another day that's very important to me is May 20th of 2010. And that's the day that I first pushed play on P90X. And so that you guys know a little bit about me, I'm 30 years old. I'm a dad of three girls. Um, Tina just turned five on Christmas Day. Mila is three in two days. And Elena is 10 months old. Um, I became a coach just a few weeks after she was born. Um, you know, I did four full rounds of P90X. And, uh, you know, it... It changed my life and my outlook on life. I was, you know, I started to feel lazy and I was drinking two rock stars a day and I was sitting in an office 12 hours a day, Monday through Friday. I'd get into work about 4.30 and leave most days at 5.30 and work through lunch half the time. Uh, and then on Saturday mornings for three years straight, I worked from five o'clock to noon. And I did this for three years straight, and my wife was working at the Hilton Garden Inn, and she was working Monday through Friday from 3 o'clock until 11 o'clock at night. So our kids were at a babysitter from 3 o'clock until I got home at 5. And, you know, it just wasn't the life I wanted to live. Um, you know, we ended up in that situation because I had a career that just wasn't working out that I thought would work out. And... We had house payments, and like everybody else, we had bills that had to be paid, so I had to take on more responsibility at my job so that I could work more hours and support our family. And, you know, I've so that you know me, I've always been a hard worker with the 12 hours a day and the, and the working on Saturdays, and it's something that, that I always have had and that I was taught by my dad, and he always thing I remember most about my dad is he always would tell me, if you're going to do something, uh, do it right the first time. And he always taught us hard work. You know, when I was a kid growing up, we couldn't go play uh, on Saturdays until we did our chores. And when we would, uh, when I was in high school, I had a job two hours a day after school as a janitor kind of cleaning up, vacuuming the floors in an elementary school. So I've always been a worker. And so I think that's a big part of my success is that I know how to work. Um, so so that's, that's a little bit about me. Um, like I said, Lindsay invited me to be a coach well, well before I became a coach. And the thing about her and why she's successful is she didn't push me. She offered me the opportunity, and I wasn't interested. But when, after I thought about it for a time, I found out that this is something that I could do. And six months later, you know, I became a coach. And that's a little bit what I'm going to talk about later is, you know, you have to plant those seeds. And if someone says no to you, or they don't accept what you have to give them as a coach, you shouldn't be upset about that or or let that get you down because you've planted a seed and all that it takes is to cultivate that seed and wait for it to harvest. So, you know, I decided I wanted to be a coach and it's, it's something, I, I remember sitting in my job 12 hours a day and I, I would always sit there and try to figure out how I was going to get ahead in life to where I could be with my family you know, me, my wife, and my three kids, you know, not always separated and only having Saturdays and Sundays to be together. And I remember I would sit at my office desk with my notepad, like the one you saw me write my little, my little note on today for, for what I was going to talk about. And I would write down uh, how much money I would have to pay extra on my house to pay it off in 15 years. And I would write down, you know, after that, how much I would have to pay you know, to, to get ahead a little bit to where my wife wouldn't have to work. And so this, this leads into, you know, my why. 
you know, I wanted to, I've always tried and tried and tried to figure out how we could be together, you know, more time than we are, you know, right now and in the past. And it's, it's just been something I've always tried to do. I tried to start, I tried making a business plan to start a, um, a hair salon that my sister could work at and be a little business that I own. And I was just afraid of getting a more into more debt, getting a loan to, to buy a place and to start something like that. So I've, I've always tried to figure out how to, how to go. After watching Lindsay succeed in this, you know, I, I finally told myself, you know, I have results and I love P90X, so why can't I do this? And so from there, you know, I decided that day that I decided that I, I wanted to do this, I was set on it. It wasn't like I'm going to, I'm going to become a coach and I'm just going to, you know, kind of browse around, help a few people get in shape. I decided from day one that I was going to change my family's life. I was going to get my wife out of working and I was going to get myself out of that cubicle that I was at for 70 plus hours a week. And I wasn't going to let anything stop me from doing that because I can do anything that I put my mind to. So a big part of being successful for any coach that's on this call or that listens to it is to really figure out your why, like Edwin's saying there. Because if you have that, that why, when you come up upon small stumbling blocks or small, you know, pebbles on this mountain that we're climbing, uh, that's called success. When you come across those, those those little blocks, you don't get frustrated and, and turn around and go back down the mountain. You know, if if you have a coach in your downline that that loses interest, or if you have a customer that says they're going to buy something and they get it on eBay, or or they, you know, they get they go burn P90X or something like that. If you if you let those things bother you, you know, then you you're not really focusing on your why because those are really small those are really small things on this journey. And so we gotta have something that we're constantly focused on so that when those small things come up, we can easily just look at that and say, that really doesn't matter and then look at everything positive that you did that day. And, and the way to help yourself do that is my next biggest thing. Number one, really find out your why. Not, ju not just jot down in five minutes why you're being a coach, but really search out in your soul why you want to succeed and what it will mean for your family and what it will mean for your, your friends and your cousins and your parents or anyone that you bring into this. And, and let that drive you. And then after that, you really need to, to work on personal development. And this is, this is something that, you know, that you really, 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 really need to do. If, if there's one thing that you did besides talk to two people per day about what you're doing, it's personal development. And my number one suggestion, and a lot of people suggest it is the slight edge because it helps you understand all these small things that you do every single day that they will take you to success if they're positive things and you know the, the slight edge is one of the main things that has taught me to do the small things every single day and and help me to believe in myself and another another huge one that I love is Craig Holiday and you guys have probably heard, seen me post it before but I can honestly say, I don't know how many times, but I can honestly say that I have listened to Craig Holiday's 90 Days to Success over 50 times. I listened to the Passion one six times today at work. Um, the one called Passion, the Defining Difference. And, you know, all I did is save them on my phone. It's easy. They're in the back office. You just right-click, save target as, name it, put .mp3, and save it on your phone or your MP3 player or whatever it is, and when I'm at my job, my my nine hour a job that nine hour a day job that I have right now, I'm out packing boxes for a service department and shipping stuff all over the world. I'm out there listening to Craig Holiday all day long, and and the reason I do that is because he helps me 
believe in myself. And he helps me believe in this business that there is nothing better than this. And, and that what we do have will truly change lives. And so it's extremely important to do personal development. I have the slide edge on CD and I have listened to that at least 10 times. It's, I should, I should get something else, but my memory is horrible. So <laughs> I listen to things over and over and over and over again. And, you know, I listen to that. It's a 15 minute drive to work and a 15 minute drive home. So I listen to a half hour of slight edge every day. Uh, and then I do read a book for 10 minutes each morning. First thing before I get up, that's my frog. I'm really not a good reader. So, so when I wake up, I, right now I'm reading Push. So I make sure before I turn on my internet and my Facebook, I read my 10 pages. And that's the very first thing I do. And then from there, I go through my list of the most important things to get done and, and then move on through there. And I want to talk a little bit about my schedule. Um, and I, I think my wife wrote something for my website um, once about this, about people complaining about not having time. It will be all about scheduling. And Lindsay shared this call with me. The first time I listened to 90 Days to, uh, of Success, she recommended time management to me. Because I remember I was a month, maybe a month in, to being a coach, and I called her. And I told her I was feeling overwhelmed. I'd brought some uh, coaches in, and I was trying to, to help people. And I felt like I was on Facebook all day, and I was lost. And I felt overwhelmed, and I kind of wanted to quit. Because I wasn't making any money yet, and I was doing a lot of work. And so she, she, she recommended that call to me by Craig Holiday, And I listened to it, and I bought a calendar, and I put it on my wall in my bedroom. And I write everything down and <laughs> I forgot to write down that I did this call tonight. Thanks for the text today, Lindsay. But uh, but I try to write everything down and I schedule time and it's so important to do that because a lot of us do have families. We do have full-time jobs and we do have, you know, a full-time beach body business to take care of. And so that's, that schedule is very important to what you're doing. And I'll, I'll show you guys a little bit how my schedule is to show you, you know, what, what kind of time I put into my business every day. Um, so you can see what I'm doing a little bit every morning. And I do work seven days a week. Sunday nights, not really. I just check in on my challenge group at night before bed. But every day when I wake up, I get up at 5.30 in the a.m., which is very early for me. Um, I read my book. I check in on my three challenge groups that I have running right now. And then I check through my messages, and I have, I'm not saying that any message is more, really more important than in another, but I check for messages that are more uh, business growing messages, uh, rather than time managing, or rather than business managing mes messages. And and then from there, you know, I drink. Uh oh, Scotty disappeared. Hold on. Am I back? Okay, am I back now? Okay. Ah, uh, where where did you guys where did I lose you at? Where did I get lost? Emails. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So in the mornings, you know, I check those emails, uh, and I I I don't have time to go through all my emails, so I do my business growing emails, and save the business managing emails for later in the evening. Then I take off to work at 7. Um, I am a little bit of a cheater because I do answer text messages all day long while I'm at work. But I'm really not allowed to be on Facebook. So I don't work at my job and I do need to keep my job and not lose it. So, but when lunchtime comes around, I schedule calls with my downline coaches that are willing and running 
uh, that schedule with me. Today I talked with Jeff Kipe, and we, we keep them short and to the point. And I talked with Jeff Kipe, and then right after I talked with uh, Becky Barantini, and from there, um, I go and write a website post and feature a transformation or feature uh, a Shakeology um, spotlight that I do or something else motivational on my website. And then from there, I'm back to work at 1 and I leave about 4.30 or 5 o'clock. And I shouldn't really do this, but <laughs> I make calls on my way home from work sometimes today. I talked with Jay Halla while I was driving home. We had some things to talk about. And then I get home at 5 and I play with my kids and my wife for 20 minutes or so. Then my kids come downstairs and we work out. My kids are down there with me with their little weights doing their push-ups and my wife takes a breather if she's not at work. Um, <coughs> so I do my workout every day at 5 o'clock, part of my schedule. Get done about 6 o'clock and then 6 o'clock is my family time, 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. And part of that time management by Craig Holiday is you schedule that time for your family. And he says if you're at a little league game, you're at that little league game. You're not talking about coaching via text or checking your Facebook. And he, he tells you, shame on you if you're doing that. And I still have to work on that sometimes. You know, I try to get as much things I've done, and my wife gets on me about that. So I'm, I'm glad I have her there helping me keep that straight. Be where you are. That is exactly right. And you don't want it to overcome your life, so it needs to be scheduled. Um, every day, my beach body business again resumes at 8 o'clock, and I will work on that until I get done. And most nights, to be honest with you, it is about midnight by the time I get done. Um, you know, I had one day I had uh, Sherry come over. She was kind of interested in what I was doing. And, and, you know, I told Sherry before she came, I was like, you're, you're going to be pretty bored watching what I do and you know so she came over and she watched me first thing I did was at night was check on my check on my um, my groups that I'm because those are my number one commitment because they're 100 percent committed to their Shakeology and their workout so I check on those and I give them a small assignment something some kind of question that that makes them start a conversation with me and then from there I go to answer all the emails, every single one that I have. And after that, I go to my list. And I have a notebook because once this starts to grow, you're not going to be able to keep track of everybody um, that you're working with. So I have a list and I have little codes and symbols about who's interested in Shakeology, who's mentioned they're interested in it. I write little notes on what we talked about. I write notes on who's interested in coaching. If they told me they're going to coach when they finish in 63 days, I write that down. I flip the pages 63 days, you know, and I write, this guy's going to be a coach. And I write their name in there. And I do follow-ups with everybody that I'm working with. I follow up with them every week. And if it's someone that's interested in coaching or Shakeology, I follow up every three days. Um, and it's something I do every single day. I, you know, you... If you want to grow a business that supports your family and, and give and and helps you achieve that why, you have to you have to work it every single day like a job. I I remember telling myself from the beginning and and talking with my wife about this that if I want to be paid I have to work. I can't I can't just I have to treat it like a real job. If I'm feeling tired on a Wednesday night and 8 o'clock comes around I'm tired, I can't go to bed because I have a job to do. I have to go to work at 8 and I have to make sure I finish my job before I go so I get paid. And in the beginning, I wasn't getting paid. No one is in the beginning. You know, with challenge packs now, you, you are getting paid faster, but in the beginning, I worked and worked and worked and worked and invested time in people. And, in, you know, that's one of the most important things um, to do is work from that list, use that you know, write down what you what you talk about, who you talk with. When you get a new name, when you get a new person to work with, you know, you work with those people. And you write their name down and you follow up with them. And what it is really about is we all know, and if you've listened to Craig Holiday and his calls, 
Um, one of them is called relational marketing and why this is the best business that you can be in. You know, he talks about this as being this is he says there's a point when you when you realize that this isn't about selling Shakeology and this isn't about P90X and it's not about Turbo Fire, it's not even about challenge groups. It's about relationships. Uh, what we're doing is, is building relationships with this business. Um, whether it's with your customer in the beginning and then you work with them and then it moves on and then it's relationships with your coaches uh, that you have in, in your downline. <laughs> Sorry, I read the notes and I got distracted a little bit. But, you know, it's it's about building those relationships, you know, every every single day. And it's it's something that Lindsay did with me. She built a relationship with me. And I'm going to jump off track just a little bit with what Lindsay says right there about no one getting paid in the beginning. Lindsay is a great example to me, and I've used this example with more than a few of my brand new coaches. When I first approached her about being a coach, if I calculate back to when I first approached her, she was probably only a coach for about three months. And I could have swore that woman was making a hundred thousand plus dollars a year being a beach body coach. And that and I don't want to sound greedy, but I wanted someone that knew the business that could teach me the business because I had results. And so it, it's weird for me to look back at that right now and it, and it, you know and it makes sense why she attracts so many people to her business. Is from day one she used her phrase, fake it till you make it. And she was confident in herself, you know. And it, when you have confidence in yourself and you're passionate about what you're doing, people are going to come to you. And you know. And then when I signed up with her, she was a coach for nine months, for ten months or so. And so that's that's one thing that you gotta you gotta remember is you have you have to, you know, you have to be somebody that sh that has changed their life life and then people will want to look at you and go to you to help you know so that you can help them do the same thing and that's that's why I was attracted to her business and to her bombshell dynasty that she has and that, that she started and I'm just gonna jump off track of that but that's one thing that I followed from her um, I am all over the place with this but you know, you want to find coaches that are truly successful in this business, and they they can all five be from this team. They can be from other teams. It doesn't matter. But find someone that's truly successful. I say find five people and make it part of your daily schedule to watch what they're doing and to learn from them. You know, I I follow Lindsay, and from the beginning I followed Katie with her consistency with her blog. And I followed Wayne Wyatt because he's a beast of a coach as well. Um, you know, I tried to do things like he did on his website. When I started doing transformations on my website, it was from seeing transformations on his website. And, and I, I try to learn from Lindsay on how to post motivational things and, and things that touch people, you know, on a more emotional level so that they can you know, so that they feel a connection to you and want to come, come, you know, learn from you and, and, and do the kind of things that you're doing. And, you know, even just recently I've had people come to me and say, you know, I think, I think it's so cool that you are celebrating people's successes and, you know, congratulating them on what they've done. That's something that I would like to do. It'd be so cool to be able to do that. And so, People, people are always watching what you're doing. And this brings me to uh, another step, which is very important, which is consistency. Um, slight edge, or Craig. Slight edge really talks about being consistency, being consistent in everything that you do. You know, if those of you that have read it you know the example of the flywheel. You know, in the beginning, you're pushing on that flywheel really hard to get it turning and you barely you push it and it barely moves and then you push it the next day and it moves a little more and then you push it a little more and a little more and after time that thing is going really really fast <laughs> and 
you know, and that thing's going fast and it takes less to keep it moving after you get it going. But if you decide that oh, I'm going to take a week or two off because I'm, um, I'm starting to see some success, I need to relax. If you do that, that flywheel starts to slow back down and you lose, you lose ground and you lose your pace and you've got to start back over with those hard pushes again. So it's important to always be consistent. And consistency is really what my, my key to success is being in Success Club 10 every single month since I started. I have always, before I started, a uh, few of you may know, a few may not, but I started a fitness group before I became a coach. And I was coaching people for free for six months um, on a Facebook group. I wasn't officially a coach, but I was in there posting pictures about P90X, you know, adding friends that were interested, and just being consistent with it. And, you know, over time, I've built those relationships with those people, and we continue to add people in. And that's, that's the key to being successful as a coach, is to consistently add people into your list that you're working from. And I know a lot of, this is the main part of the game plan, but we're supposed to be talking to at least two people per day about what we're doing. And, and this is part of being consistent. If you're consistently talking to two people per day, there's 60 people that know that you're a beach body coach, that you can provide them financial freedom, that you can help them get in shape, that you can help them be stress free, that you can help them lose 100 pounds, you can help them get ripped, you can help them free up time with their family. So if you're talking to these people, two people a day, you're adding 60 people into your relation, into your, you know, you're adding a relationship to 60 people per month. And Amy's asking, how do I do that? I do it through every every way possible. Facebook a lot, um, in person, at work. But but Facebook is a huge one. And any time that I meet somebody, I'll, I'll give you a little tip here on how to meet new people. Um, just so that you guys know, I, I don't really... In the beginning, I, I friend requested some people from high school I knew and, and people I knew from from church, from a mission that I served uh, back when I was 19. And I also, you know, added some people, um, you know, from college and, and so forth. But after that, you know, my friend list when I started being a coach was, was 250 people in April. And it's now over 2,000 people. And the way that happens is when I start to coach somebody and and it's someone that I've talked to at work or someone I've talked to at Walmart and yes, I wear a sleeveless shirt and a big jacket because I'm in Idaho and right when I get in, into Walmart, I'll take off my jacket and throw it in the cart so that I can talk to people about, about our fit club. And it's not very, it's not, not very comfortable at all for me, but it's getting easier and easier to do. And you will get it, Amy. But uh, but when I get someone started on P90X, just to give you an example, I think I have seven or eight challenge packs this month. Um, my latest challenge group that I started of Insanity, I really only found one of the pe one of the pers one of the people that is in that group, and this person. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about it, just so you know how important it is to do wear and share and to talk to people. If you guys all remember, I went on a cruise with my wife from Puerto Rico in November. I was walking out the first night from a dinner, uh, after dinner show, it was like the opening show with the dancers and the singers and all that stuff that my wife loves to go to. And I had my P90X2 polo on. I was walking out and this big six foot five bald ripped dude tapped me on the shoulder and he's like, have you done P90X? And he points at my shirt. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, and I, I told him, actually, that's part of the reason I'm on this trip is uh, I'm a beach body coach. I help people through P90X. And I make a living doing it. And he's like, oh, that's cool. I didn't know there was anything involved. I didn't know you could make money doing that. And, and so we started talking about that. And, you know, that's a start of a relationship right there. And him and I, we worked out in the gym every day on 
on the ship. And we've just been friends. And, you know, I, I was out asking people to be in my challenge group. And I called him on the phone. And I said, hey, Nyan, I'm starting a challenge group. And we are going to do Insanity. And uh, I think it would be awesome if you were in it because you're ripped. You could help us. You could help me coach some people. And, you know, he's, he's only worked at the gym. And I was like, I think it would really boost your, your cardio. He's in the Army in Texas. And he's like, you know what, man? I'm really busy, you know, working on this project with my dad. And I'll be busy until about April. And so just to show you how relationships are so important, he's like, you know what? He's like, when I'm when I'm free in April, I'll be in your challenge group, and let's talk about Beachbody because that might be something I want to do. And so before we left, I said, uh, "I was like, do you know anybody else that needs to get in shape that could that would love to do Insanity?" And he's like, "Let me ask around." And so he asked around, and before you know it, he found his staff sergeant, and she wanted to get in better shape. She's in her mid 40s and wanted to be able to keep up with the younger guys, and so I called her on the phone which is uncomfortable for me because I'm a message Facebook type of guy I called her invite her to the challenge I use the five I'm not going to go into this the five step invitation process because we all have access to that and you've seen me post uh, you know on Facebook about how how to do that but you know I followed that and she committed to being in my challenge group and once she did that I asked her if she knew anybody else that she worked with or if she had any friends that would like to do to do this along with her so that she could you know so that she could help her, help hold herself more accountable so she actually asked a whole bunch of friends and we got two of her friends to join the challenge and all three of them bought challenge packs and the same thing happened with the other set of girls in that group is I asked one girl from high school if she'd be in my group um, and she committed, and then I had her find a friend to be in the group with her to help hold her accountable. So you can find, I went off a long time on that, but you can find, um, you know, referrals by ask, just asking people. And I do that all the time when I have someone start P90X, even if they're not in my challenge group. I'll post something on their wall about how their workout was, and a lot of times people will comment on that, on how hard that is or that they have it. <coughs> Sorry. But... You know, I'll interact with them on their wall, and it their friends start to talk about it, and I'll be forward with them right on that wall comment when people are like saying they've done Insanity or P90X or they're currently doing it. I'll tell them that I have a Facebook group that they can join. And so there's always ways that you can go out and invite. And I do want you to know that that I don't just ask five people, and five people say yes, I want to be in your challenge group. You're Scotty. Yeah, let's do this. You know, I ask a lot of people. And I would say for each challenge group, I'm, I'm asking in person via text, Facebook, or a phone call. I'm asking 30 people at least to be in the challenge group before I get five committed. And, you know, and that way you got 30 people that know that you have a challenge group. So when they're ready, that they can jump. You know, when they're ready, they can come back at you. And so just consistently invite people and don't be afraid to invite anybody you know um, that's one thing about this let's see this how would you go about the how much does it cost question that one I tell them exactly what it costs you know one of the things I'll kind of summarize how I go go through that when they're like if they're just like okay what does this cost to be in the group I tell them well to get a challenge pack, it's two hundred and five dollars. You get your work. You get. Sorry, my screen went black. You get your workout. You get a thirty-day supply of Shakeology, and you'll get free shipping when you get this challenge pack, and you'll get a free month in a club membership. All true facts, right there. That will be two hundred and five dollars, and then um, the next two months, all you'll need to get is your Shakeology, and that is one hundred twenty dollars or four dollars per meal because you'll be replacing one of your meals. And I just tell them straight how it is. If they want it, they want it. If not, they don't. But right after I tell them the price, with everybody, I, this is when I throw in the why. The why with the customer. I tell them how much it is, and I say, how, oh, and I do throw in as well that 
this group is not only going to help you get in shape for 90 days, but we are going to teach you how to live a healthy lifestyle so that you can continue living a healthy lifestyle for the rest of your life after this. So that, to me, adds value to what this is going to do. We're going to, it's going to be a school for them at the same time. And then, and then from there, I ask them, why do you need this? Why do you think, or how do you think you would benefit from being in this group, and why do you think you need this in your life right now? So that you can find out their why. That way, when they come back with it's too expensive, or you know that seems like a lot, you can come back and ask them how bad they want to lose that 20 pounds, or how bad they want to be in shape and be able to play with their kids, or whatever their why was. So you just need, and, and that all comes back to being bold and being confident and not being afraid of someone telling you no. Because if you don't tell them what it costs and what it is to take in it and what they're going to get from it, you're not going to get anyone to say yes. And it's going to take maybe 30 people you ask in person before you get five to say yes. And so you're going to, it, it leads all back to the consistency. You're consistently asking. Don't take those, those no's <clears throat> as a no. Don't take it as a rejection. Take it as they're not interested right now. Maybe they have some school they're finishing up. Exactly, Jay. Maybe they're finishing paying up some bills or they're finishing off a car loan or, or who knows what. You don't know their financial situation. So maybe next month they're going to be ready to be in that challenge. And so, and when I do get a no, I always ask people, do you know anybody else that could benefit from this challenge? And once in a while, you'll get some names, and then you can ask those people if they want to be in your challenge. So, you know, that's, that's the important part to me about being consistent and, and, and always, you know, talking about what you're doing. It's, you know, <clears throat> 10 months into the journey, it's, I had people, I, I, I know I said on the last call I did, but I had people crumple up my Fit Club flyer, you know, and throw it against the fence at softball. You know, and just kind of, and one of them even made a comment, has, has my before after picture on the flyer. And he's like, you know, he's like, I don't want to see that stuff. I don't want to see you half naked, you know, sarcastic look and chucks it in the garbage. You know, but these are the people now that are coming to our fit club. You know, this is just my softball team, for example. Yeah. You know, that softball team, that season ended and it came time for fall. Softball was starting August and I, I told him, you know what, I'm doing this beach body business and I'm putting 100% into it and I need to cut back on some of my activities that I'm doing that, that aren't helping me, you know, reach the goals I want to reach. And I told them I wasn't going to play and some of them were not very happy about that. And, you know, and some understood, but, you know, that, that, I do love softball. And two years from now, I can play softball all day long. <laughs> but, you know, and my actual coach, is a coach with us right now in one in my first challenge group. You know, he's someone that that watched me, you know, succeed as a coach and then want to do the same and want to get in shape. And you know, and that's all from him watching me, you know, quit my softball team to do this and and watching me run Fit Club and and still nine months from now doing our Fit Club and you know I don't, I don't try to talk about the income too much because it's not in a bragging way, but once in a while you show it to show people that, yes, this, this is a real opportunity and that, you know, that you can grow, you know, that this is, this is a real thing that we're doing. And I'm just a real guy, you know, just a, just a normal guy that works full-time, has a wife and kids and a full-time job, but that if you <clears throat> focus on this, that, that you can be successful. And people are always watching you, and and I know with all of you coaches down there, as you continue going and being consistent with what you're doing, the people that are watching you, they will come, they will start to come to you and, and asking you for help. And so, always be consistent and and really work on that personal development because when you're working on that personal development, you know you you learn to be more confident in yourself, and when you're more confident in yourself you become more passionate. When you're more passionate, more people will come, the, you know, they'll come to you and, and want your help. And you're more confident in asking them to join your challenge. You're more confident in telling them that a challenge pack costs $205 and that they're going to save $45 plus shipping. 
you know, so it's really all about that confidence and developing personally and and just being consistent. And there's so much more I want to say, but it's already 826, so I will uh, let you guys know, go for now. Unless anybody's got a quick question, I can answer like one question before I hand it back to Lindsay. All I see is stuff about getting hot and laptops and stuff. I wish it was only 826. Well, it's 826 here. Well, Lindsay, I think I am done for today. Uh, make sure to live with passion. And don't be afraid to offer people uh, the coach opportunity. When you're talking to people, you know, you don't have to try to sell them on being coach. You just have to build a relationship to them. And when I have coaches ask me what, what they're supposed to talk about to these two people, I tell them the same thing Craig Holiday says. Sit down with them and tell them what you're doing, uh, why it's so important to you, you know, why, why you think it would help them in their life, and that you know, you're okay if they're not interested in, in them doing this, but you want them to know what you're doing. And, and I, I tell people that, you know, my friends here, I don't want you, this is like my friend, my best friend Andy, who's going to be a diamond coach within a couple of months. I'm, I'm absolutely 100% positive of that. But I told him, you know what, I don't want a year from now you asking me why I didn't invite you to do this. And, you know, so so just just get out and share your passion with people. Let them know what you're doing and that, you know, that you believe in them and that they can do this too. So I am done. I'm going to give it back to you, Lindsay. Can you guys hear me? All right. So that's why Scotty Hobbs is so successful. Um, if anybody was wondering, now you know. Um, I wish I could go back through all the thoughts that popped in my head while he was talking <laughs> um, and give you notes on everything that was popping into my head. But I personally am completely overwhelmed with all the information that he, that he gave you guys. I hope that you'll go back and listen to this call over and take notes and remember um, it is about putting yourself out there. It is about saying the price and not hesitating. One of the biggest things that I, I used to suffer with when I first started as a coach was saying Shakeology was $119.95 and I because at, at a point in my life, probably in the beginning, I didn't know if it was worth it because I wasn't using it. And if you're not using it and if you don't know the effects of it, then yes, of course you would question it because it's $120 a month. But if you're using it and if you felt the difference and you know how to break it down for people that it is only $4 a day and you're replacing an entire meal and to replace the value that is in Shakeology with a healthy meal, it would cost way over four dollars there's very few meals very few healthy meals that you can put together for under four dollars everybody complains that eating healthy is more expensive and there is a lot of truth to that you know unless you're really really good cook and you can throw ingredients together really well and but most healthy ingredients perish very quickly because they're not stuffed with preservatives and so having something like Shakeology where it doesn't go bad and you could have it at the drop of a dime and you save money because you're spending less on that meal, which is amazing for you, than you would be spending on a great meal otherwise and having to put it together yourself or go somewhere, you get to put it in a quick cup or a blender. And so learning how to put value in Shakeology and have people understand it allowed me to to be firm with my price and not hesitate or blink an eye when I told somebody the price. And when I started doing that, when I started having confidence and its value and know that it was worth that, then more people started to say yes. I'm not gonna say everybody says yes. 
Um, there are many, many, many people that want to be a part of my challenge right now that say they, they still insist that they can't afford it. And I'm not a pushy person. Like Scotty said, I let you make your own decision. Every decision that anybody's ever made, it's never been me. Oh, come on. I know you can do it. No, I don't do that. Um, I'm confident eventually most people will come around and they will want to at least try it for a month because they're going to be curious because of my consistent posting about it, because of the consistent um, success stories, because of all these people sharing um, the things that they've accomplished. It's through that that people will continue to watch you. And you guys, I saw you posting about how people – even if they say no, they still continue to watch you. That is so true. And that's why it's so important to have integrity in your posts. So when you're posting on Facebook, understand, and like Scotty said, this is a business. This is for real. I'm making over $100,000 a year doing this business. And I started a year and a half ago. So this is a real business. It's something legit. It's something that will make you a lot of money down the road if you want it to, if you're willing to work. And if you're willing to make the short-term sacrifices and not see immediate gains. But if you start posting and your posts are like, oh, I feel so much, I feel so amazing, Shakeology, blah, 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 and my workouts. And then you're posting, I'm drunk and I'm doing this, that, and the other, and, you know, I'm so hungover and this person's, you know, whatever explicit you want to talk about them or my boyfriend's doing this, that, and the other, and, it's like you're ruining your image. I've seen so many coaches and I've seen so many of our coaches post posts that would kill your business. It is so hard once you've slandered your name to get that back, to get yourself clean again. And I didn't start out clean in this business. You know, I have a lot of things that people could have judged me about in my past. I did like, you know, Maxim type modeling when I was like 18, 19 and I wanted to cover it up and I was like, oh gosh, it sucks. I want to just delete it all. But it took me a long time for people to get to know me as me. And yes, people might think, okay, oh, she looks a certain way. So people are going to want to join her. But there's a lot of people that think differently of me because of that too. And so you have to constantly be forming who you want people to view you as. Am I perfect? No. I'm not going to pretend for a second, and I don't try to pretend I'm perfect on my Facebook, that I have the perfect life, but I don't post my problems on Facebook. If I'm having a bad day, I don't talk about it to Facebook. This is not an open diary for you. It's a real business, and what you put out, you get back in. And so that is my expertise. I'm sure most of you guys know I am like social media girl all the way. That is my 90 probably 95%, 90 to 95% of my business comes from social media. So I can tell you one piece of advice, a limitless um, existence of leads. If you want to talk about you need the two a day, I mean, you could literally get 100 a day if you wanted to on Facebook, more than that if you wanted. There's a billion different groups that you could join that have no other coaches in them. It doesn't have to be a P90X women's group or whatever. There's a million groups out there and you build relationships, real, real relationships with people to get to know them first. You don't try to sell them on stuff. You have to take an interest in people again and stop, you know, pretending for your stuff to be so interesting. And I, uh, I, let's see, I recorded a call for Beachbody that's going to be put up in the back office on Friday and it's for the team challenge. Um, but it really has to do with challenge packs and running challenges, which is, is definitely becoming my little expertise. And I'm so in love with it. It really is an amazing um, adventure that I've gone on to really try to fine tune this thing. And I will over the next few months make it just unstoppable. But I talked about how you really do have to, to really get into somebody else's life before you try to throw something at them and say, hey, be interested in what I have to offer with my hairstyles today, which I'm, I'm sure most of you saw the post, but I go to a different hairstyles every single month. I do this strategically because, and I go to nice hair salons, I don't go to just anywhere, but I, I go to different people because my hair color's simple and I know they want to start a conversation with me. And so if I start asking about them, they're going to start asking about me and I'm going to get an opening to talk about, you know, what I do. And if they're interested, I don't push it on there. I don't try to like go on a spiel as soon as they say something. But the girl today asked me what I did. I was short and sweet with it. I'm a coach for Beachbody. Have you ever heard P90X? Um, and she's like, yeah, yeah, I heard of that. And then I stopped. 
what are they going to do next? They're going to be like, well, what do you exactly do you do as a coach? So I don't say, oh, I'm a beach body coach and blah, 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 blah. And I have these challenges and you should join in. Blah, blah. I don't do that. I don't ramble. I have it be a back and forth conversation. And so she started asking more and then I stopped. I never pushed anything on her. She just kept asking questions because she's interested. So she was like, well, how do you get a coach? And I was like, how? and she said, how much is it? I'm like, actually coaching is free. Beachbody pays me um, through any commissions through purchases you make. So if you purchase a program or if you purchase any of the nutritional products, then I get a commission from that and I coach you free. You don't have to pay me anything. And then I, that's when I had it in to say, um, you know, I have these challenges and, and so this is how this is run, blah, 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 and go on. But that's because I already knew she was interested and now she wants to know more. And all of a sudden at the end of it, I found out not only does she want to do it, but she has two roommates and she really feels that these roommates would want to do it. And so of course I'm going to say, all right, well, you know, she's like, do you have a card? And I said, well, you know what? Just give me your email and I'll send you information. Cause that way I'm not waiting on her to call me. I'm going to take the initiative and I'm going to call her or I'm going to write her. So now I'm going to help her get her own challenge group started and she'll be in my next challenge, hopefully with her two roommates. And I can tell them, you know, what better way to keep you guys accountable? Well, we live by the beach to say, you know, by April 15th, when our challenge ends, you guys will be done with your challenge and be in amazing shape. And she's like, well, I just bought two beach body. I'm sorry. I just bought two bathing suits from Victoria's secret. And I said, well, you know what? Um, the trainer for the Victoria's Secret models is Alejandro and or, or Leandro, sorry. And he has a program called Brazil butt lift. And it's one of our programs. There's a challenge pack. It's only $160 and you get Shakeology and, and the program. And so that's how I kind of got into that. Now, did she ever feel like I was trying to sell her? No, she wanted the information. She wants to lose weight. And most people do. If our entire nation is, you know, half obese, then most people want to lose weight. Most people want to live a healthier life. They just don't really know how to go about it or they feel like it's too um, outside their comfort zone to do it alone. And so they really do love the idea of having accountability. And so when you explain the groups, you're not just selling them a challenge back most time, you're gonna get involved in a challenge group. So I don't just say, well, you get Shakeology, you get P90X and you get 30 days of club. I tell them everything they get. We're going to do daily assignments and I'm going to show you, I'm going to make mindset videos for you. And there's going to be daily accountability from your peers, people that are going through the same thing as you. So, you know, like sometimes people don't have the support at home. This gives them somebody to go to, someone to share their life with and you don't necessarily know them. So it's kind of nice because there's some obscurity to it and people love that. They want to know, you need to tell them all the value that they get with that $160, that $205. It really is a good deal. And point out the fact that they're selling, they're saving themselves $40 to $55, depending on what pack they're getting. Break down that the fact that they're saving, you know, $15 to $20 on shipping. I break down everything for them to provide as much value as possible. And I remember when Shay did her call, she went over everything. It was so detailed on how she explains the value of Shakeology and you have to do the same thing with challenge packs. So I posted this yes, or, um, last week, but I wanted to keep it on here because I think Scotty represents a great leader because of this, um, because of the things he does. And I'm gonna read it again. To become a great leader in Beachbody, you actually have to want for your coaches and customers to succeed on their terms and for their benefit more than for your own benefit. Remember that the next time you try to sell someone the first time you talk to them or try to pressure your coaches into rank advancement so that you'll hit diamond. It's not about you. It's about truly helping others achieve their goals. That is when you'll naturally begin to hit yours. Give more than is expected or required, go above and beyond, and you will win people over and they will bend over backwards to do the same for you. You will never lose a customer to a coach that's poaching someone. You will never uh, have a coach 
who feels discouraged or underappreciated or pressured if you act like this. You have to be the kind of person that really truly learns to care about other people more than your own greedy goals. And yes, we all have our own goals in this. And you, trust me, I've gotten into this completely broke and bankrupt, so I know I needed money too. But if your main goal is to get back your investment as fast as possible, you're going to be disappointed. You'll get back your investment, sure, but it'll never go up from then. It'll never prosper because you won't start getting referrals if you hard sell someone. If you really love someone where they're at and you really show them what's possible with the, for their life, they're indebted to you forever. They'll do whatever it takes to help you because you help them without asking for really anything in return. Something I got from Barbie Decker's call today, and I'm not sure if um, you guys were on the national call or not, but we have.